Welcome to I'm Your Target Demographic. I'm Adam Ryan Daniels, and today we're talking about a comic book series that has been rumored to be a movie for a long, long time. Apparently there's a script written, soon to be coming out, well not soon, hopefully soon in relative Hollywood speak, uh, and that is a project called The Runaways. The Runaways is a pretty kind of under-the-radar comic series in the Marvel Universe uh, with some fascinating characters, and today we're going to talk about who those characters are. Uh, and this is really intended for people that don't know anything. So this video isn't for Runaways fans that know all this stuff. This video is for casual viewers that are interested and maybe want to get more interested in this. So that's who this is for. Now imagine this. There's a group of children who all find out that their parents are supervillains. Yeah, they find out at this big gala that they're all attending and the kids kind of sneak in and see that there's this meeting happening um, of all of their parents, and they're plotting some sort of kind of world-ending scenario. So these kids, being kids, all kind of freak out and run away, hence why they're called the Runaways. Um, this is a very non-traditional superhero story, so they don't really have aliases, they don't dress in costumes. Uh, they're never called the Runaways, really it's kind of just the title of the story, they're not called that. So these kids then try to use, they find out they have powers, and they try to use their powers to stop the plans of their parents and then save the world. So what we're going to talk about today is who these different kids are, uh, what they can do, and what a movie about the Runaways might look like. The first one we're going to talk about is a girl named Nico Minoru. Uh, Nico, her parents, she discovers, are witches, like dark wizards. Um, and as she flees, she learns that she also has this capability to wield magic. Her mother has an ancient weapon called the Staff of One, and she uses it to try to hurt Nico, but the staff goes into her body. Okay, now this is kind of strange. Uh, the staff is inside of her, and she then can't control it, so she kind of gains control of the staff. And in order to get the staff out of her, she has to bleed. Okay? So, say she's wants to stop a crime, she has to cut herself, and then the staff will come out of her, um, and then she can use it. And actually, anyone can use the staff, but only she can summon it from her body. Uh, so kind of very strange, but she has that. And she is very powerful, or it's said that she will become very powerful, that when Doctor Strange, who is, he's called the Sorcerer Supreme, and he guards our planet from kind of mystical, magical forces. Um, and it's said that Nico is a possible candidate to replace him as Sorcerer Supreme. So she's pretty powerful. The Staff of One also has this really interesting quirk that it can only cast a spell once. Maybe why it's called the Staff of One. And she has to get really creative with, instead of saying freeze, she has to say brain freeze. Or um, she says, like, freeze, like, the temperature of whatever. Like, she has to be really specific so that it's technically a different spell. Uh, if she tries to do the same spell a second time, so she, say she says freeze, uh, pigeons appear. Um, so it's very strange, but that's a quirk. And if you try to do a spell a second time, who knows what will happen. The next runaway is a young girl named Carolina Dean. And Carolina, her parents are not... They're not just supervillains, but they're also aliens. So they are aliens that are kind of colonizing our world, and she discovers that she is one of them. And this race is able to absorb sunlight, and they can kind of use that energy for different things. So they can kind of do a blast, or they can uh, create a force field, she can fly. Uh, her natural, or I guess their natural way of being, is kind of living as light. So it's kind of this fluid, rainbow-looking thing. Uh, but with practice, she kind of learns to look normal again. Carolina, while in the Runaways and kind of maturing and growing up, uh, struggled a bit with her sexuality and ended up actually getting in a lesbian relationship with another Runaway, uh, who we're not going to talk about here because they're kind of in the, a later roster, um, that is a gender-bending, kind of shape-shifting alien known as a scroll uh, named Zavin. Um, and kind of Zavin chooses to appear as a female um, in order to be in a relationship with Carolina. 
So super interesting, um, unlike any storyline I can think of. Uh, but Carolina, alien, looks like fluid rainbows. Next up, we have a runaway named Chase. Chase, his parents were super villains, but they weren't supernatural. Uh, they were inventors. So they would invent weapons that were able to kind of create mass destruction. So when he discovers this, he steals some of their equipment, most notably these gloves called fistigons, that they can shoot fire or they can shoot electricity. They're kind of very powerful gloves. Um, in the team, he also is kind of the driver because he's the oldest in the team. So he has his license, so he drives them around. Um, he ends up in a relationship with another runaway named Gertrude, which we will talk about now. Gertrude Yorks. Uh, Gertrude's parents were time travelers. So not only criminals, but criminals across all time. So when she discovered this, she found kind of their agenda, what they were trying to do. And she also found a, okay, bear with me, genetically engineered velociraptor that she has a telepathic link with. So this dinosaur can communicate with her and tries to protect her. Um, so for the run of this comic series, there's a dinosaur on their team um, named Old Lace that will protect her. Super fascinating. And Gertrude and Chase have a relationship. Very cute. Next up, we have a young girl named Molly Hayes. And Molly is about 11 when the series starts. So very young. Uh, her parents are telepathic mutants. They can kind of do mind tricks. Uh, but she, her powers are super strength, and we find out invincibility. Uh, we find out that she's almost near invincible, which is crazy. Uh, and she's super strong, but when she uses her strength, it takes a toll on her. So at the very beginning, she throws a punch, and then she passes out. Um, and so she learns to kind of like, you know, get some stamina and be able to like do this for a long time. Uh, there's actually a really funny instance of, you know, she was getting tired and Nico cast this spell to caffeinate her to keep her awake longer to fight more. Um, so interesting, but she's really young, but really powerful. There's a storyline called Battle, Battle of the Atom that takes place kind of in an alternate future. And it shows a potential future where Molly is an X-Man. Uh, she's super strong. Um, so there's definite potential with Molly Hayes. And lastly, we have kind of the leader of the team, at least initially, and his name is Alex Wilder. Alex is the only non-super person on the team. His parents are kind of crime bosses, kind of in this crime syndicate. Um, and he doesn't have powers, but he is like a smart tactician, a strategist. So he leads the team, but he's really just a normal guy. Um, kind of reads a lot, uh, very, very intelligent. Um, and his storyline is fascinating, but it has to do a lot with the plot that will likely happen in this movie. So I'm not going to go into it, but there is much more to Alex than just being kind of the team leader. So that's who they are, at least the initial cast. There are some other people that came into the Runaways at different points, but that's who we start with. Um, what a movie would look like. Uh, it might, you might get the feeling that because they're kids, it will veer to a younger crowd. Uh, which it might draw them, but it also has the potential to be really dark. Uh, I, mean, I mean, a story where this girl has to kind of cut herself and then a staff comes out of her and she uses it to cast spells is kind of grim. Um, and there's relationship things and there's growing up and there's kind of living without your parents and trying to struggle and survive on your own. Uh, I think there's potential for it to be a very adult-themed movie. Um, the storyline would likely be kind of their origin, that finding out that their parents uh, are part of this plot. And their plot is basically, um, they want to bring these giants back. Uh, giants that kind of inherited, or, you know, lived on the earth before any of us were here, uh, called Gibberim. And these giants, their plan is to kind of destroy the earth and start again, kind of create this paradise. Um, and the humans, their parents, why they're doing this is to kind of save themselves. You know, hey, we'll help you create paradise if you save some seats at the table for us. So they're going to cause this horrible catastrophe, but save them and probably their families. So the kids are trying to stop them. Now, how would this work in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Um, I think it would work seamlessly because their problem, their story, 
no, it's not a not an end of the world scenario like we've seen in the movies where it's kind of like buildings are being destroyed it's happening in new york big things like that this is like a secret catastrophe that these kids would handle without anyone knowing so iron man's not going to show up because iron man doesn't know that it's happening so that makes it really easy to fit into this world that yes there's super villains there's heroes you know they could reference people like hey when i want to grow up i want to be captain america you know, they could say things like that as kids, but we don't expect cameos of these other people to show up. So it would fit easily into the pre-existing Marvel Cinematic Universe. So I think it's a fascinating idea. Um, after doing all this research, I want to go out and buy the trades of Runaways just so I have them and can, you know, read the whole thing. And this sounds really interesting. Um, we know that the movies are planned out to like, what, 2020? So maybe they'll add in some movies or maybe this is something that'll have to wait. But I'm excited for potential you know maybe this becomes a netflix series maybe who knows um but i think this is a really cool group of characters and some really cool potential so comment below does this sound interesting if you watch this video and you don't know anything about the runaways does this sound like something you would watch or does this sound like no it's too kiddie or no this isn't gonna fly uh let me know so thanks for watching and subscribe like all that jazz we'll see you soon